Uh, and I'm very excited to present our first uh, speaker of this last session, uh, Eric Verden, who is the CEO of uh, the Buck Institute uh, and one of the leading figures in aging research. And he will tell us about uh, NAD, um, NAD metabolism and how it impacts aging. Eric, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Uh, thank you, Morten, uh, for the uh, and you and Alex uh, for the opportunity to, to speak at this meeting. So I will just uh, get started. Um, a disclosure, I'm a founder and equity holder for Napa Therapeutics, a company that focuses on restoring NAD during aging. Um, so the landmark paper that, that was published in uh, 2013, uh, so-called Hallmarks of Aging, really played a, a key um, organizing role in our field and allowing us to define a number of key manifestations of aging. Um, and so this actually has helped us in, in, in identifying um, specific problems that we can, we can target uh, in, therapeutically as, as we move uh, to, um, to reverse or, or to suppress aging. Um, one of the, um, there are a couple of problems with this uh, model is that it is, um, multifactorial, therefore it signals that um, maybe there are no uh, single uh, drugs that can actually really uh, target aging, uh, but also raises a number of questions in terms of what is their hierarchy uh, of these hallmarks of aging? How are they organized? Uh, it, can we actually uh, stack them on top of each other so that we can identify key points that we should be targeting in aging? Another question is which of these um, uh, modifications or hallmarks actually when targeted uh, uh, synergistically uh, work versus uh, independently. So I think we are at a key stage in, in aging research where we really need more understanding of how these hallmarks of aging uh, interact. And some of what I'm gonna be showing you today actually goes into this direction. Um, one of the, uh, the thing, another potential problem with this uh, model is that it is missing a key, what I think is a key hallmark of aging, which is chronic inflammation. Now, chronic inflammation has emerged as one of the uh, really key manifestations of aging. It plays a key role in the pathogenesis of what we call the chronic diseases of aging. And it can essentially result from the activation of any of the hallmarks of aging. Uh, However, this itself does not solve the problem because what is really not clear is how chronic inflammation itself actually leads to accelerated aging. So what I'm going to be showing you today is, a, is one way to think of how some of these hallmarks of aging might be interacting together. And the focus of this presentation is on a, an observation that was made a number of years ago by, by many investigators, uh, which is the fact that NAD levels decrease during aging. And, and this occurs in multiple tissues. Uh, it ranges from uh, 20 to 50 to 80 percent, uh, depending on the tissue, depending on the model system. But it seems to be a, a real a constant uh, across aging in, in multiple organisms. And this was reviewed here by Yoshino and colleagues in cell metabolism. So this is a finding that intrigued us uh, for very specific reasons. And my lab had been involved in studying the biology of sirtuins, which play a key role uh, in, in, in aging. And um, they are highly dependent on NAD. And the fact that NAD level would decrease during aging uh, seemed to be quite important. So uh, the way we, we think about NAD as, as a cofactor or co-substrate for a number of enzymes is illustrated on these slides. Um, at the top, the sirtuins I just mentioned, the key factors that uh, have a, a globally anti-aging effect or protective effect. Um, so they're one of the key enzymes that use, they utilize an AD. Um, on the left are the PARPs, polyADP ribose polymerase, which play a key role in, in genome protection in response to DNA damage and other uh, pathways. And, and finally, so both of these enzymes, sirtuins and PARPs actually utilize an AD. They cleave it when they utilize it, they essentially consume it. Uh, the other class of enzymes are the so-called redox enzyme, use uh, the NAD and NADH couple uh, and are also uh, likely to be affected if NAD levels decrease. Many of these redox enzymes play a key role in oxidative pathways uh, in the mitochondria and the cytoplasm, and therefore a uh, loss of NAD could affect uh, intermediary metabolism via these redox enzymes as well. 
Um, we published a, a number of five years ago, actually, and, and uh, uh, Carlos Canto and uh, Johan Aurex published a similar review at the time, uh, proposing a, a competition model between NAD utilizing enzyme. And according to this model, um, during aging, we know there is uh, increased uh, DNA damage. Um, this is obviously uh, accelerated in patients who have deficient uh, DNA damage repair, such as cocaine, uh, xeroderma pigmentosum, or ataxia telangiectasia. And so this leads to accelerated DNA damage and activation of the PARPs, which drains away uh, the NAD so that the redox enzyme and the sirtuins actually do not have the proper amount. So this was one model. Uh, this model is has now evolved, and, and the focus of my talk is going to be on a, another family of protein, two proteins, um, CD38 and CD157, um, who are also NAD consuming enzymes, uh, CD, uh, uh, NAD hydrolases. Uh, so our interest in, in, in these two enzymes was triggered by a paper by uh, Camacho, Pereira, and and Eduardo Chile at, at Mayo Clinic, what they reported in uh, 2016 uh, was the observation that uh, CD38 levels increase uh, quite significantly during aging. And in contrast, the other NAD consuming enzyme, PARPs and SIRT1, NAMPT, and, or, which is actually in the salvage pathway, did not seem to vary. Now, what, what um, uh, excited us uh, about these findings was the observation that um, so this is actually what you measure in adipose tissue as you measure NAD levels during aging here on the left side. What, what excited us particularly about this paper was the realization that in a CD38 knockout mouse, the NAD levels were uh, maintained. And so it signified that at least in this context, in mice and in adipose tissue, uh, the major driver of NAD decrease in adipose tissue during aging was CD38. And so uh, we started uh, this program uh, with a, a new postdoc in the lab at the time, Anthony Covarrubias, um, and who had actually experience in immunology and immunometabolism uh, with a series of questions. And these questions were in large part triggered by, by one fact, is that CD38 as an immunologist is known to, uh, to be an ectoenzyme, which is primarily found on immune cells. And it's been reported to be on CD4, on CD8 T cells, on B cells, and on NK cells. And in that context, it functions in cell adhesion, in signal transaction, in calcium signaling. CD38 cleaves NAD, shown here, into nicotinamide, which is recycled into NAD, and cyclic ADP ribose. This itself uh, actually has a, a calcium signaling effect. Interestingly, uh, CD38 is highly expressed in multiple myeloma and is actually targeted therapeutically using a monoclonal antibody, uh, daratumumab, which is shown here as a therapeutics. So our first question, knowing this and knowing that CD38 expressed, expression rises during aging in adipose tissue, our first question, which had not been addressed by Chini and colleagues, was to ask, in what tissues, in what cells within adipose tissue is CD38 expressed? And so the way we, we did this is using this, this um, uh, preparation of what, what is called a stromal vascular fraction. It's shown here, you isolate all of the cells from, adip from uh, adipose tissue, you separate them and you centrifuge them. The adipocyte uh, will, um, uh, by their lower density, uh, will go to the surface fluid separates another a fraction, the stromal vascular fraction, which contains every cell that is not an adipocyte in adipose tissue. We then subjected the stromal vascular fraction um, to uh, flow cytometry analysis using a number of markers. And uh, to cut the story short, I just want to highlight the fact that um, we find that in aged animal, these are 25 months old mice, uh, there's an increased uh, level of CD38 expression in a fraction that we identified as the macrophages. Um, these are CD45 positive, CD11B positive, F480 positive. We followed up uh, this analysis uh, using a number of additional markers to try to identify which types of macrophages uh, actually express um, uh, CD38. There are two different types of macrophages. In most tissues, there is a resident macrophage, which is deposited early 
uh, early in life in embryogenesis or in the first few days of life. And there are also bone marrow derived macrophages which continuously are produced uh, within the bone marrow circulate to peripheral tissue. These different macrophages have different biology and therefore we can actually separate them using a set of markers. And what we found was actually quite interesting because if we look at mice um, aging from two to 25 months, we find that the CD38 level increases uh, actually close to sevenfold uh, in the resident macrophages, but does not change in the non-resident macrophages. So the next question that I will uh, spend a few minutes on, uh, which is really key here is to our effort to try to understand what activates CD38 expression in aging macrophages. Now we think of uh, aging as an unbalanced act between damage and repair. Uh, early in life, we know that the, well, damage is a constant uh, in, in most of us. Uh, the repair pathways are highly activated early in life and, and tend to degrade uh, as we get older. So there are uh, macrophages actually play a very uh, unique role in, in, in the biology of, of dam damage and in, in particular by their ability to recognize uh, different forms of damage that are imposed on tissues. And this is illustrated here, especially the innate immunity, uh, dendritic cells that are illustrated here in blue and the macrophages in purple, uh, contain a number of uh, specific receptors that are able to recognize two forms of molecules called the PAMs and the DAMs. The PAMs are pathogen associated uh, molecular pattern. Uh, so these are molecules that are typically uh, released by pathogens, whereas the DAMs are, um, are damage associated molecular pattern uh, signatures. These are molecules that are typically released by cells that are stressed or, or injured. And macrophages are able to recognize those to activate a specific uh, signaling pathways and to leading to the release of cytokines, uh, chemokines, immune cell recruitments, inflammation, and tissue repair eventually. So our first question was, what uh, are any of these PAMs and DAMs able to activate um, CD38 expression in macrophages? And so the ex experiment was done by uh, isolating uh, primary macrophages from mice, uh, growing them in culture, and subjecting them to treatment with a variety of these PAMs and DAMs. And what emerged is actually a pretty striking picture. We were expecting the DAMs uh, to do it, but we were surprised to find that these macrophages actually responded primarily to pathogen-associated molecular signatures. In particular, uh, one of them uh, drew our attention. This is LPS. This is lipopolysaccharide. Um, this uh, particular uh, uh, molecule, which is released by, uh, by gram-negative gram bacteria, is actually um, uh, one of the, the main triggers uh, for the differentiation of macrophages into a unique form in the so-called M1 macrophages. The other form of macrophages uh, is uh, the M2 macrophages, and these macrophages play a very different role in the aging process. They seem there is growing evidence for a, a progressive shift from M2 to M1 uh, during aging. And these M1 macrophages are, 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 are thought to be a key, fact, key factors in the progression to a pro-inflammatory inflammatory state uh, as we age. So our next question was to ask, is, are there any differences indeed in, in CD38 expression between uh, M0, which is the undifferentiated macrophage, M1, and M2. And our prediction was that uh, M1 macrophages should express a much higher level of CD38. And this is exactly what we saw. Uh, when we look at relative CD38 expression, we find M0 uh, and M2 macrophages expresses no CD38, and it is highly activated, uh, close to 600-fold uh, following induction into the M1 phenotype. We, as a corollary to this, we can also detect uh, the presence of an NADase activity uh, when we incubate M1 macrophages uh, with NAD and, and, and demonstrate that this NADase activity is completely dependent on CD38 because the CD38 knockout here actually does not express 
does not show NADA's activity. So this has actually interesting implications for a number of, of uh, reasons. One, we know there's a progressive shift to M1 uh, during aging. Therefore, we would this could be one of the reasons why, why we see increased CD38 expression during aging. The question, another uh, implication of this is we know also that these uh, pathogen associated uh, molecular patterns, the PAMs, uh, actually can leach out from the, across the uh, leaky uh, gut, the, the, the gut dysbiosis associated with aging results in a decrease in permeability, increase in permeability of the gut membrane, which is associated with increased circulation of, of these bacterial products. So this is a second secondary mechanism by which we think um, um, aging might be uh, increasing the expression of CD38. Now, this is one mechanism, and I will come back to this at the end. Um, the, the second mechanism um, was um, based on another observation in, in collaboration with our colleague, Judy Campisi uh, at the Buck Institute. And so the observation was that um, in adipose tissue uh, during aging, uh, we and others actually have shown that there is uh, increase uh, number of senescent cells. And this is illustrated here with a stain for uh, beta gal, the senescence associated beta gal, both in uh, uh, white adipose tissue and in uh, 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 intestinal adipose uh, tissue. And you can see here the increased color uh, in, at 18 months, or you can actually reverse this by treating uh, these mice with synolytic drugs. Now, I suspect that this audience actually is quite versed in, into the biology of senescence. Uh, I want to show you here one example of uh, our effort to try to organize the hallmarks of aging uh, in hierarchical structures. And this is a clear example where this actually works quite well. We know that cellular senescence indeed uh, can be activated by four of the other hallmarks of aging, mitochondrial dysfunction. This is the Midas uh, phenotype that Judy Campisi has, has published. Epigenetic alterations also known to be playing a key role in cellular senescence, telomere attrition, and DNA damage or genomic instability. So here's a, a, a clear example where that places cellular senescence as a consequence of, of four of these uh, hallmarks of aging. Now, I suspect that most of you know this, but if you don't, I will, I will remind you, um, cellular senescence is characterized by a, a tripartite phenotype. First, irreversible growth arrest. Second, uh, resistance to apoptosis. And third, uh, the so-called uh, multifaceted uh, secretory phenotype, or so-called SASP, senescence associated secretory phenotype, which was uh, identified by uh, Judy Campisi and her lab. And it's thought to be uh, uh, one of the key mechanisms by which senescent cells actually cause uh, chronic inflammation. So the question we asked uh, was actually quite simple. It was to try to determine whether senescent cells by their increased presence during aging in adipose tissue could actually release a SASP. We know they do. And could that SASP itself activate CD38 expression? And so this was done by um, uh, in a variety of ways that I'm going to show you in the next few slides. The first one was to take mouse embryo fibroblasts. These are primary cells. We can treat them either uh, control doxorubicin, a DNA damaging agent, or irradiate them. We then harvested the supernatant for each of these conditions and then incubated them with mouse macrophages. And what we saw is shown on this slide. And indeed, we found that the supernatants from senescent cells were able to activate CD38 expression. Now, this was mostly specific for CD38. We only saw a very small increase in terms of CD157. I should say CD157 is a related molecule to CD38. It also has an NAD hydrolase, but uh, it, most of the effects that we have seen so far appear to be specific to CD38. And in contrast, PARP1, 32, 31, PARP2, and other enzymes did not appear to be uh, changed by the SASP. Now, we looked at this also in uh, in in in, in cells that are probably more relevant to adipose tissue um, versus the, the primary mouse embryo fibroblasts that I just showed you. We also 
uh, we're able to induce um, uh, senescence in pre-adipocytes. This is done in this case by irradiation. You can see uh, again here the induction of beta-gal staining um, after uh, irradiation. Um, in these cells themselves, the pre-adipocytes, there is a, a, a small increase in CD38, which very re uh, reach significance, but a significant increase in P16 and P21, two of the hallmarks of senescence along with beta gal And we can take the supernatants from these cells and add them to, um, uh, to, uh, to macrophages. And we find again, uh, almost threefold induction of CD38, uh, no change in CD157 or the other uh, NAD consuming enzyme. So it's indicating that at least in, in that system again, the uh, supernatant from the senescent uh, preadipocyte uh, is able to activate CD38 expression. Finally, we were also, Anthony uh, Kovarubias in my lab was able to show that he was able to induce uh, a phenotype that looks very much like senescence in macrophages themselves. And this is illustrated here. These cells are, when one when irradiates uh, macrophages, you can see the induction of beta gal. Uh, in this cell, in these cells, we do not see induction of P16. This is something that appears to be unique to macrophages, but we see a robust induction of P21. And here again, the supernatant from these cells, actually the cells themselves, show a dramatic activation of CD38 uh, expression. So these uh, observations, uh, and so for the last thing that we did was we know uh, from the work of Birgit Schilling and, and Judy Campisi and their teams uh, at the Buck, who have spent uh, quite a bit of time analyzing uh, the uh, SASP uh, cytokines. Uh, a few of them are listed here, so we were able to test them individually, and we were able to show that IL-6, TNF, and IL-10 all induce a CD38 expression in macrophages in a dose-dependent manner, and in contrast, interferon alpha, beta, and IL-12 did not do so. And so this is my, my last and, and summary slide where I am attempting to take many of the hallmarks of aging um, and to replace them in, in, a, in, a, in a more organized manner and summarizing what I just showed you. So I've showed you that PAMs, um, uh, which are the results of an altered intercellular communication, uh, loosen uh, epithelial membrane barrier in the gut, is able to activate uh, inflammation and macrophage uh, proliferation. Um, the, the SAS secreted by senescent cells does the same thing. Both lead to CD38 expression and decrease NAD levels. And this NAD levels has implication both in terms of uh, metabolic dysfunction. We know decrease NAD will lead to decrease uh, uh, oxidative uh, potential in cells, but also to sirtuin dysfunction and, and changes in epigenetic uh, uh, modification. On this, uh, so we, we think that this, uh, this way of thinking is going to be helpful in helping us identify really key nodes in, in aging pathways and ways to intervene, in particular here, CD38 and NAD. And finally, uh, I want to acknowledge the many collaborators who've participated in this study, in particular, uh, Anthony Kovarobias, who was, really was the, the driver uh, for this uh, work and was actually now uh, looking for his uh, new faculty job. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Really stimulating talk. We have uh, some questions here uh, on the Slack channel. Um, we have one from uh, Wai Wong. Do you also see the fraction of resident macrophages as a proportion of the stromal vascular fraction increasing with age? Yes, that's a very good question. I did not have the time uh, to go into this, but uh, it's not only the relative number of the relative expression of CD38, it's also the number as a fraction of the total of resident cells actually increase uh, during aging. And remarkably, the SASP also contains a factor called GMCSF, which is a proliferation factor for macrophages. And it's been reported you know, for 80 years now by Mechnikov and colleagues that macrophages proliferate during aging. So we, we see this exactly, and we think that compounds the problem. Not only do they proliferate, but they express more CD38. Very interesting. So we have a question from Yong Pan. What disease indication slash unmet medical needs would be addressed by NAD plus boosting therapeutics? Now, that's a very good question. And this is one that we're exploring right now. 
So the, the model that I've showed you, uh, this activation of CD38 in macrophages um, uh, was documented in this study in, in adipose tissue. Obviously, you know, this regulation of adipose tissue uh, during aging is, is a known factor. We have shown the same thing uh, happens in the liver, uh, where the resident macrophages, the so-called Kupfer cells, also uh, increase CD38 expression during aging. There, for them, there's all kinds of implication there regarding uh, liver disease, cirrhosis, and so on. We are exploring the role of this mechanism also uh, in the brain. And I think we're going to take them one step at a time. At this point, uh, uh, one thing that's clear is that CD38 expression does not rise in every single tissue, uh, but it rises in a number of, of key tissues that I just mentioned, and, and, and we are exploring the, the full biology of, of this. Very cool. Uh, maybe one last question. Uh, can NAD plus boosting improve immunity and decrease the possibility of in infection, especially for COVID-19 infections? And this is Mohamed Anmaliki asking this question. Yes, that's a very good question, actually. So um, it does. Uh, well, when we say increase immunity, you know, there are many sides to Im immunity. Um, that includes both the innate and the adaptive response. Uh, in the case of the innate immune response, we clearly see that uh, NAD increases uh, macrophage function and secretion of cytokines. In the case of, of the adaptive immunity, T cells and, and B cells, the situation is more nuanced. We see, we've published actually that um, uh, sirtuins and NAD levels might be playing more specific role in the balance between Th17 and Treg cells. So it, it, it's a lot more complicated, but generally um, increased NAD levels is associated with a more effective immunity. And the, the point is very well taken that this is something that we, we could and should consider uh, as we're facing uh, uh, this pandemic. Very cool. Thank you very much, Eric. Really appreciate your talk.